the four great Allied fronts gather momentum, General Montgomery ordered his men to strike at Caen. The start of the British and Canadian offensive came at dawn. It ended with the fall of Caen, another decisive blow at the fading might of the Nazi defenders. Nerves were taut as the Allies probed for an opening. These Tommies were not long discovering it, and the capture of another enemy strong point was soon complete. The British, Canadian, and American forces are fighting today on a 150-kilometer front in France. Against the British sector, the Nazi high command vainly massed its armor, but it was not enough. It was no match for the endless stream of Allied men and machines that now pour onto European soil. The Nazis defended Carr with furious determination. Destruction was inevitable, but it's a small price to pay for liberation from Hitler's rule. The Allies took great care to spare the famous church of Saint Etienne. It was known that thousands of townspeople had taken refuge here. Many of the liberated French directed our troops to Nazi hiding places. A few snipers stayed behind, but these were soon rounded up. Signposts in the center of the town indicate that Paris still is more than 200 kilometers away. But distance becomes relative as the Allied sweep to victory accelerates. The hand of war fell heavily on Caen, but out of this damage a new life of freedom and dignity already is rising. German propaganda posters claim that Churchill is depending entirely on the Allied blockade for victory. Outside this theater fly the flags of the liberated and the liberator. Members of the French forces of the interior, underground for so long a time, glory in the results of their heroic resistance. And after four subjugated years, the people of France raise their voices in the immortal Marseillaise. French military courts lost no time dealing with traitorous countrymen. These two young men were tried at Cherbourg as spies in the pay of the enemy. They tried to hide their shame as the story of their guilt was confirmed by a parade of witnesses. Evidence against them was conclusive. They were spared death because of their youth. It's hard labor for life for these two collaborators. Here are the American forces who captured La Haye de Puy. La Haye de Puy is actually a little market town, but militarily important as a rail and road junction. It was a great loss to the Germans, and they fought savagely to keep the Americans out. Many experts believe the Germans will give ground almost anywhere rather than on this Western Front. But from the Allied point of view, there is only one front, the front on which the forces of freedom are fighting the forces of tyranny. Greater and ever greater pressure is being applied by the Allies in Italy. Here too, the enemy has no escape from his growing dilemma. If he continues his retreat northward, both southern France and Yugoslavia invite Allied landing operations. If he attempts to hold Italy, he must call upon more and more reserves needed desperately in Russia and Normandy. Here, too, the Germans are faced with mounting proof that the military power of France has been reborn. In a brilliant operation, the French captured the town of Siena, only 50 kilometers from Florence and they took the city without damage to the 800-year-old cathedral or to other historic buildings. Here is graphic proof of the meaning of liberation to the Italians. 
These same cheers will echo and re-echo as the grip of Nazism is broken throughout Europe. Today, the Nazi soldier looks in vain for support from the once powerful Luftwaffe. Allied planes such as these operate at will over the Nazi battle lines and shipping lanes. These bullfighters of the Coastal Command surprised an enemy convoy off the Frisian Islands. Two merchant vessels were torpedoed and three set on fire. Five others, naval vessels, were damaged. Coastal Command has carried out one of the great assignments of this war. It patrols from the Bay of Biscay to the Arctic Circle. It has closed both ends of the English Channel to Nazi E-boats and has won a decisive battle against the U-boat. German air power began this war, but it's a crippled bird now. Allied air power is ever mounting and it's going to be on hand to finish this war. was lost to enemy flak. In the east, the Red Air Force rules the skies and the Nazi defeat is cataclysmic. Captured German pictures show the vain Nazi efforts to resist. withdraw into East Prussia. At this moment, the Red Army is posed to thunder over the German border. The Russians have come back, back to great cities lost three years ago. Kovel, Tarnopol, Minsk and Vilna. One after another, they return to Russian hands. These remarkable Russian pictures are the latest received from the Eastern Front. They show the triumphant Red Army on the flood tide of victory after victory. no chapter in military history to compare with this smashing Red Army offensive. The size of the armies, the deadly enmity, the numbers of Nazi slain and the numbers captured. In many respects, the Russian campaign dwarfs all that has gone before. And to Russia goes the honor of first fighting and destroying the German armies on German soil. green cavalcade of defeat will continue until Germany surrenders completely, unconditionally.